Hey guys, so today we are going to be doing a video on my favorite and the best alien horror movies that aren't alien. Yes, you see that in the title. I just think it's obvious that they're good movies. I love the Alien franchise, so obviously if you haven't seen them, watch them. The third Alien movie is my personal favorite out of the franchise. I do think it's a franchise that's a little bit overdone at this point. The last few are mm, okay. But I wanted to make a more diverse list that encompasses more genres, more eras of sci-fi alien horror, different types of alien. So hopefully this list is kind of all over the place and there are some on here that maybe you're not familiar with already. The first one on the list we're going to start with is Signs. Now this came out in 2002. It is a classic at Night Shyamalan movie. This movie follows a farmer, his brother, and his children as they discover strange crop circles appear in their cornfield overnight. This has a lot of big stars in it, such as Mel Gibson, Joaquin Phoenix, Abigail Breslin, and Rory Culkin, Macaulay Culkin's brother. And Night Shyamalan himself has a role in this movie. Now this is of course a famous, famous film, and arguably M. Night Shyamalan movies aren't all straight up horror movies. I think Sixth Sense was a pretty good horror movie, but generally I think his movies do fall under the more thriller genre. I don't think Signs particularly ages well, like if you were to watch this today, never having seen it before, specifically because of how the aliens look. M. Night actually originally wanted the aliens to be clear and see through, but he couldn't get the effect right. But I do appreciate that the crop circles they created for the movie were real because he wanted to use more practical effects there. He didn't want to use too much CGI within the movie and I love that because real effects are the best effects. Now this movie does have a little bit of a religious backstory. I am non-religious but it doesn't bother me at all. It's just part of the story. Uh, Mel Gibson's character plays an ex-pastor or priest. I can't remember which one and I honestly don't know the difference. <laughs> and M. Night has said that the scariest thing in the film is that a good man could lose his connection with God. Never thought of the movie that way. But sure, I guess. And also that the title of the movie, Signs, not only refers to the crop circles, but also signs from above. Not a huge fan of that angle, but I can appreciate the depth that it added to the story, I guess. You know, it's more than just like a straightforward alien movie. It's like the family dynamic and everything, which I really like. This was also Shyamalan's first movie after Sixth Sense, which was obviously a huge movie and a huge hit. So he wanted to make sure that he did not mention Sixth Sense at all in any of the marketing so he could differentiate the two movies. Obviously this is a very classic alien movie, but M. Night Shyamalan movies are not everyone cup of tea, but this is definitely one of my favorite of his movies. Actually, the three in a row that he made, Sixth Sense, Signs, and The Village, that is like the best Shyamalan era ever. So next up is easily the most horrifying and scary movie on this list, and that is The Fourth Kind. Although according to IMDb, it is not listed as a horror movie. I definitely disagree with that. And you don't even see the aliens in this movie, and I think it's the scariest alien movie I think I've ever seen. Anyway, this came out in 2009, and it follows a young therapist played by Mila Jovovich set in Alaska, where strange disappearances keep happening. Now, what's different about this movie is they actually portrayed it as a dramatization of real-life footage and based on a true story, when in reality, everything within the movie is fiction. I'm not sure if anyone really believed that the real footage footage was real, um, but I do think it added a lot of amazing horror elements to the movie because they were able to use kind of that realistic VHS looking footage and they could do a lot more with that than the recreated images that you see side by side to it, if that makes sense. So without this part of the movie and like the real footage and the real story, I don't think this movie would have been as scary. Hear a lot of stuff and the audio alone is all you need and then your imagination will fill in the rest. And I love when it does this, especially when it comes to alien and sci-fi movies, because we can probably imagine something much scarier than they could create visually visually on screen. However, all of that being said, there is a little bit of controversy around this movie. Now, this takes place in Nome, Alaska, and those that are native there say that this movie is insensitive to family members of people who have gone missing in Nome over the years. I personally had no idea that this happened in Nome prior to seeing this movie or even after seeing the movie. I didn't know that that was something that was occurring, so I could see how this movie 
could be triv trivializing their losses. Also another controversial thing about this movie is that 51% of Nome's population is made up of native Alaskan, but there are no indigenous characters in this movie at all. But generally I do think that this movie is super effective horror and the visuals and the sounds alone, I still think about them to this day. So next up is one of the most recent movies on this list, but not the most recent, and that is Annihilation, which came out in 2018. So this follows a group of scientists into a mysterious zone that has popped up on Earth where the laws of nature and time don't apply. Now this movie is actually based on the first book in the Southern Reach trilogy, and instead of the director rereading the book in order to make it the most accurate portrayal, he decided to adapt it like a dream of the book. And boy does this movie feel like a fever dream. I really love the concept of this movie and how weird it gets. It is just such a weird movie and I love the visuals within it. It's just, it's a beautiful movie too. The end does get a little bit more strange than the rest of the film and I actually read a review that summed it up perfectly by saying the climax is much more of an intellectual payoff than a spectacular action scene. So some might be expecting this like big climax but it's actually just very strange. It's very weird and you don't really know what's going on. You have to really pay attention to it. I actually wasn't even a fan of the ending when I first saw it, but now having seen it a couple more times, I can really appreciate the weirdness and I kind of get it and like, I don't know, first viewing, it was a little too weird, but now it does kind of fit into the rest of the movie, but it might take a second viewing to get that. Next up is Life. This came out in 2017, and this movie is probably the most similar to Alien on this list, and it actually was inspired by Alien, but maybe a tad more realistic. It's a little less sci-fi than Alien, but similar in story. So this follows a crew of scientists aboard the International Space Station, and they discover a life form that caused a mass extinction on Mars. So this starts Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds and I wouldn't say this movie is super scary it kind of feels more like a creature feature that's kind of why I compare it to Alien because it's not so much super scary but it does take place in space which I can really appreciate I think so far none of them have taken place in space and they're technically alien movies. So I love a good alien movie that takes place in actual space. Maybe I don't find it as scary because generally creature features just aren't scary to me. Underwater is kind of an exception to that. It does have really decent effects though, and so that definitely helps when it comes to the horror aspect. Now, I don't wanna say too much about this movie because I don't wanna give anything away. Try to avoid trailers if you haven't seen it yet, but do give it a chance if you want something that's like very alien-y and spacey. Next up is an underrated gem, and that is Phoenix Forgotten, another 2017 movie, and I actually wish I had talked about this in my best found footage horror movies. I thought about it as I was editing the video, and I was like, I can't believe I forgot Phoenix Forgotten. <laughs> it obviously takes place in Phoenix, Arizona, and this footage is found from 1997 of three teens who disappeared after mysterious lights had appeared over Phoenix. This is actually based on a real life event that occurred in 1997 called the Phoenix Lights, where a supposed UFO sighting occurred, which is actually actually the most famous UFO sighting where thousands of people actually saw the lights. This movie is definitely one of those more simple found footage movies, much like Blair Witch. You don't really need to see a lot or there's not a ton of story there. And it doesn't really need a lot of the story and effects to be super horrifying. And I genuinely think this is a scary movie, even though they had very little to work with. It was a very simple, straightforward type of movie. The concept alone of being lost in the desert while being like hunted by aliens is so horrifying to me. And about five years ago, I took a road trip. Uh, I live in Northern California. My boyfriend and I took a road trip to Vegas and we decided to drive through Nevada. So a lot of Nevada is desert. And I was just thinking when we were looking out into the pitch black, <laughs> into the desert middle of nowhere, what it would be like to be out in that. And so for me, it was very easy for me to picture myself in this situation in the movie. So I think that added another element of horror for it for me. Next up is 10 Cloverfield Lane, which is a 2016 movie and this was originally not meant to be a Cloverfield movie from what I have read online and what some of you have actually told me that they actually adapted it to fit into the Cloverfield universe later on which is why it's not actually a found footage movie much like its first movie in the franchise. This is obviously to me the best Cloverfield movie but is it technically a Cloverfield movie? 
Who's to say? But the cast is amazing. It has Mary Elizabeth Winstead and John Goodman. And this follows a woman who is being held in an underground shelter after getting into a car accident. And there she is joined by two men. They claim that the world is under a chemical attack and no one is able to leave. We, the viewer and Michelle are left wondering if that's what's really going on or if she's actually being tricked. Obviously it's on this list. So we can kind of assume what this movie does turn into because based on that summary of the plot, you'd think, why is it an alien movie? It's an alien movie, so we kind of know what is gonna happen. But I do actually think that those parts, the alien parts and the ending of the movie is the weakest part of the movie. I think the reason why it's weaker as an alien movie is because it doesn't have a lot of connections to the original Cloverfield, which was a great alien movie as well. And this was originally titled The Cellar and then was adapted later on to be a Cloverfield movie. So I feel like maybe the ending was rewritten at some point and that's why it's a little bit weaker. But the buildup of the character and the character development and interaction between all the characters are what really stands out to me and what makes this a really amazing movie. Also, fun fact, Mary Elizabeth Winstead drives the exact same car in this movie as she did in Final Destination 3. So next up, I could not create this list if I did not put this movie on it, and that is The Thing from 1982, John Carpenter's The Thing. <laughs> I also want to include the prequel, also starring Mary Elizabeth Winstead, uh, the 2011 movie also called The Thing, amazing as well, but less practical effects some more CG, but still really good. So this movie follows a crew of research scientists based in Antarctica when they notice a helicopter taking shots at a sled dog. They then take in the dog where it attacks two people and they realize that it can take the shape of its victims. This is one of my favorite horror movies for one particular reason, practical effects. Oh my god. This movie is obviously famous for its practical effects and many, many scenes that you've probably seen a million times on the internet. I'm, I'd be surprised if you haven't seen the movie at this point. If you're watching my channel, you probably have seen this movie. Except during the autopsy scene, they do use real animal organs. And as a vegetarian, I'm not really a fan of that. But the practical effects were done by Rob Bo Botten. Botten, I think is how you pronounce it. And he was only 22 years old when he did this movie, which is amazing. John Carpenter has stated in the past that this is his favorite movie that he has done, even though he did not actually score this movie like in his other movies. And what I find interesting about this movie is it has so much hype now and over the past like 20 years or so. But when it first came out, it actually bombed at the box office and critics and audiences rated this movie so poorly. And this is extra disappointing because their budget at the time was unprecedented for any other horror movie that was being made at that time at $15 million. Now, some producers say that this is because E.T. was released like a few weeks prior and so the audience was wanting a more benign alien portrayal or something and this was obviously a very gory, messed up movie. I just think this is one of the most iconic and best horror movies ever made and I like to give it love any chance I get and I'm so happy I could put it on this list of course. Next up is Slither that came out in 2006 and this movie is more of a dark comedy but more on the like the dark side and the director actually says that they're making a funny movie but they're not making a comedy so that kind of tells you the tone of the movie. It's like a dark comedy but less comedy. It's not really a comedy but it's like funny. And Slither is actually James Gunn's directorial debut which I haven't liked anything he's done since I don't think so is his best movie. <laughs> Although he kind of expanded outside of horror, which is probably why his other movies are just not my cup of tea. So Slither stars Elizabeth Banks and Michael Rooker and is set in a small town and gets taken over by an alien plague that turns residents into zombies and monsters. And the aliens are portrayed by these like slug-like creatures. So there's definitely an ick factor when it comes to this movie and it can get very gross and cringeworthy just for be forewarned. I don't think the graphics hold up that well though over the years and James Gunn has even said that he wasn't happy with how some of the shots actually turned out but it's still a fun like gross alien movie and definitely a very unique film on this list. Next up we have They Live which came out in 1988 another John Carpenter movie and can I just say that this shirt is a complete coincidence that I decided to wear this today that I'm filming this. I didn't even think about it, but 
that's weird. I found it on Depop in case you're wondering, but I will link the Instagram page that sells these in the description. So for They Live, I actually just saw this more recently, probably in the last like six months to a year. I don't remember when exactly I watched this and I knew I had to include it on this list because it is just so iconic and so original and I loved it. So They Live takes place in LA and follows a guy who discovers a pair of sunglasses that reveals the world as it actually is. The media and government are planting subliminal mes messages to keep the population subdued and it's very much like a conspiracy type movie. And if you generally like conspiracy theories, you might really like this movie. Now this is definitely a very cheesy ride of a movie. They cast Roddy Piper in as the lead because they wanted a very rugged guy and John Carpenter cast him after seeing him in WrestleMania 3. So he's not a real actor per se, I guess, and it definitely shows, but it is kind of an endearing element to this movie. Uh, the famous line, I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum was actually ad-libbed by Roddy Piper out of his notebook of catchphrases that he wanted to use in his wrestling career. This is definitely a very cheesy 80s movie, but John Carpenter is just so talented at creating these kind of sci-fi horror movies that I would definitely watch this if you haven't, but it's, it's a classic, so I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. Okay, so this list was originally going to be 10 movies, but then I remembered this movie and I had to make it 11 movies, so sorry, it's an odd number. So this is actually the most recent recent sci-fi alien horror horror movie that is on this list and that is Captive State. It actually came out last year and I'm actually really bummed I didn't talk about it in my best and worst list because I didn't really think it was technically a horror movie even though I saw it as kind of a horror movie especially given the end and like the aliens themselves, oh my gosh. But now feels like the right time to finally talk about it. I do think this was so underrated for 2019. I did not hear anyone talk about it. I think it bombed at the box office. It has John Goodman and Vera Farmi Farmiga, is that how you pronounce her name? <laughs> Among other people that are very well known. So I was really surprised after seeing it and seeing all these people that I didn't hear a single soul talk about it. So Captive State is set in Chicago a decade after aliens have invaded Earth and are now governing the human population. I just feel like this story is so well constructed and the characters feel very real and very developed and I am just obsessed with this movie. I actually just rewatched it last night because I forgot about this movie and I forgot how good it was. <laughs> I just think the concept in itself is just so cool and I love these kind of movies that are more dystopian future of what happens after like a decade or so after aliens have invaded Earth. Like kind of like District 9. It poses the question, would we stay in charge or would aliens take over? And I feel like District 9 and Captive State are like polar opposites of each other of what might happen. And I just think it's an amazing movie. So if you have not seen it yet, which I don't think a lot of you have because no one's talking about it, definitely, definitely watch it. Lastly on this list is The Mist, which came out in 2007. This one is a famous Stephen King adaptation movie. Very, very famous for its ending, of course. If you've seen it, you know. If you know, you know. It is a different ending to how Stephen King originally wrote it though, but they did kind of take an idea that was within his book and explored that and decided to end it like that. The Mist follows a family after, you guessed it, an invasion of mist that brings deadly creatures and most who enter the mist rarely come out alive. And it follows specifically a father and son that are stuck at a local grocery store while the mist engulfs the town and havoc soon breaks out amongst the patrons. And of course, aliens make an appearance. I like the complexity of this plot. We have what would happen if if we're all trapped in a grocery store and left to just fend for ourselves and it's just very dramatic and then also I love the variety of aliens within this movie specifically because they're all horrifying in like different ways so like if you're scared of birds, bugs, spiders, or giant monsters there's something in it that's probably gonna scare you. Anyway, so that is my list for my favorite alien sci-fi horror movies. Let me know if I'm missing some big ones and what you would recommend because I love this genre so, so much. I, sp I love space and alien and that whole thing. And that's kind of a newly found passion for me in the last two years, I'd say. But if you have any recommendations that are like these on this list, please leave them down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.